Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Yang Zhang from Cadence. We're going to talk today about next-generation high-speed communication in the data center. Young, there's a lot of data that we have to contend with right now. We've got AI, we've got sensors everywhere, we've got electrification of things that really were never electrified before. All this data needs to be processed somewhere and somehow, and a lot of this ends up in the data center. What kind of changes are coming? What's needed here? Sure. We see data center is going through a major transformation in this AI era as a huge amount of data required by the AI workload and a lot of AI clusters need to be integrated together. And there's a lot of intra-data center and inter-data center intercollection. So not just the compute capability is important here, but also the network link bandwidth is one of the most important limiting factors. And we do see uh, both electrical collectivity and optical collectivity play an important role there. And uh, there is a trend to bring optics closer and closer to the electrical link to reduce power and latency and the cost of the whole interconnection system. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Young, what are we looking at here? We've seen optical in the data center in the past. It's been used pretty much between racks of servers and some of the external storage. What's changing now is it's starting to come into the computing as well as the networking, right? Yes. Yeah, as we can see from this diagram, it shows the progression for how to bring optics closer to the electrical switch ASIC. The first example is uh, with passive copper cable DAC. And with copper signaling, there is a certain limitation on the distance, how long the DAC cable can support. It's shorter than what optical module and fiber can support. So then let's take a look at the pluggable optics, which is traditionally used for the optical collectivity. And there is a DSP-based uh, TXRX ray timer inside the optical module. So it can reprocess the signaling after receiving from the electrical side and transmit to the fiber uh, collections. But there is a downside for that is the optical module power is high. So there is a need to bring the optics closer to the electrical ASIC to reduce power and latency as well as the cost. So as we can see, the third part of the diagram shows linear drive optical module or half retimed optical module. So in this scenario, this is some new innovation that to remove DSP from the optical module or only keep DSP in the TX side inside the optical module to reduce power and also reduce the latency and the complexity of the optical module. And there are another initiative to bring the optics even closer to the switch ASIC with onboard optics. So the optical engine is placed on the PCB, the same PCB with the switch ASIC at a closer distance compared to the previous scenarios. Part of what's going on here is that everything has shrunk down so much that in order to get this data moving, you really need to have very low, high-speed communication, but you also need it to fit within a, a much tighter space. So really what you're showing here is that everything is shrinking and the optics have to shrink with it, and the connection to those optics have to shrink as well, right? Yes, correct. One of the big buzzwords right now is co-packaged optics. We've been hearing about this for a long time, but it's sort of been elusive. It's been one step further than where everybody has gone. What's changing here? For onboard optics, it's still off the same package, but onboard, the co-packaged optics is to package the switch component and the optical engine in the same package with the either 2.5D or 3D implementation, which are the new innovations that the industry is looking at. We're just very expensive to this. That's always been one of the mainstays of a lot of the uh, designs. Right. So service is needed on both the electrical side and also the optical side. So as you can see here, the orange line shows the interconnection between the electrical and optical, and it really needs service to do this interconnection. And so you see LR, VSR, uh, XSR mentioned here. That means different kinds of service are needed for the different use scenarios. For example, with copper cable, 
the LR long reach service is needed because it needs to support a high insertion loss through the deck cable and to the other side of the switch ASIC. And with optical module, since optical module, it has a DSP inside. So the interconnection stops at the optical module and it has shorter distance and VSR, or we call it chip to module service can support that. Um, but if it goes to the linear drive or half linear optics, since um, it needs a longer reach support uh, at the eye side, so still LR service is the right option here. And with optics moving closer, closer to the switch exit, like onboard optics and co-patched optics, then the short reach service, XSR, extreme short reach service is needed here. So we can see with optics closer to the electrical switch ASIC, the third is technology has different requirements here. Optics is sort of a generalized term though, right? Because there are really different types of optics that people are looking at. Right. So in the previous slide, we saw there were different kinds of optical module, uh, retimed pluggable optics or linear pluggable optics or linear retimed optics. So there is also a trend to use half retimed, half linear uh, optics, which is so-called LRO, linear retimed optics, or some company call it a TRO, transmit retimed optics. So the difference between LPO and LRO is the LRO still keep retimer inside the TX. So it still has a DSP retimer capability in the TX and goes to the uh, laser driver and goes to the optics. But on the X side, there is only TIA to collect optical to electrical and goes to the switch ASIC. So the purpose of LRO is it has better synchronizing compensation capability since it still has retimer in TX. And it also reduces the power significantly compared to the traditional retimed pluggable optics. And when you think about a data center, they're always going to be pushing for the latest and greatest of this stuff, right? Yes, correct. Is one faster than the other, one better than the other, or is there different uses for each one? So right now, real-time pluggable optics can go up to 1.6T, and LPO, linear pluggable optics, also goes towards there. We see companies published 800G or 1.6T LPO. However, to support 1.6 it requires 200 gig per lane data rate. So LPO, by removing, completely removing the retimer, it may have a limitation on support such high data rate. So there is still a debate between LPO and LRO on which one we should adopt for the 200 gig per lane interconnection. What's the real difference between each one of these? So the difference is about whether DSP retimer is used in the optical module and the difference in power, latency, and the cost associated with that. Also, the third is technology will be different for these different scenarios. For retimed pluggable optics, since it has retimer inside the optical module, on the switch side, VSR, very short reach chip to module service is needed. And for linear pluggable optics, LPO, it doesn't have retimer on the optical side. So in the switch, a sick long reach service is still needed. For half retimed optics, it's in between. Uh, so on the switch side, LR or medium reach service is needed. How does retime compare with LPO and CPO? This table shows the comparison between these three different optical scenarios. And we look at power, cost, latency, and performance and maturity. So for power, retimed optics has the highest power, and that's one of the reasons why we want to consider linear pluggables or co-patched optics to reduce the power by removing DSP or bring the, the optics closer to the switch ASIC. And cost the same thing. By doing that, the cost is reduced with LPO and CPO, and latency is also greatly improved. So for link performance, uh, retimed pluggable and uh, compact optics are supposed to be able to handle a uh, long distance fiber interconnection, while LPO are used for uh, shorter distance interconnection as it doesn't have DSP inside. Regarding product maturity, retimed pluggable 
is the most mature, it's a traditional optical module we have been used, and LPO and CPO are the new trains. Uh, so the industry is working on its maturity or maintainability, uh, since both retimed and the LPO are pluggable optics, so they are easy to maintain. Compact optics needs more effort on that. Data centers are notoriously risk averse though. So are they going to be slower about adopting some of the newer technologies and staying with the old ones until the new ones are ready for prime time? Good question. So there is certain risk associated. However, the research on the new technology is going on in parallel with deployment of the traditional optical module. We already see optical module vendor demonstrate LPO. For CPO, many companies are working on it as well. It involves silicon photonics technology, packaging, and all the technology associated with it. So what's the big challenge for the controllers? What do they have to do that they didn't do in the past? So for controller, one of the biggest challenges is latency. For example, Ethernet controller, it has that insight that introduce a large latency that may not be workable for AI applications that requires low latency. So there is a trend to come up with low latency controllers that is more suitable for the AI applications as well as the optical connectivities. So where do you see other potential bottlenecks in all this? Obviously, everybody wants this data as fast as possible. They want it with as little power as possible. What can possibly go wrong here? So the overall goal is to provide the optimum performance power area PPA for service at the interconnect solutions. So in addition to the challenges we talk about, there are other bottlenecks like packaging technology and uh, silicon photonics technology associated with CPO. Those are all new things that the industry is working on and to see what the best solutions could be there. Think about a data center. It's always been about solving wherever the blocks are. How do you move data through fastest? How do you do it with the least amount of power? How do you cool this stuff? What's the least amount of energy? What's the least amount of heat within a reasonable amount of money that you are going to spend to develop this stuff? We're at that crossroads now where we've got all this, these different things that are coming at us. We've got a lot of new technologies, things that have to catch up, things that are moving at uneven speeds. Where do you see this going over the next few years? Is co-packaged optics going to become the norm? Is it going to become more important as we move into 3D ICs and potentially different packaging options? We see certainly there is a possibility for co-packaged optics to have more and more maturity and deployment. It will take some time, but it's a new trend for the future. And in the meanwhile, LPO and traditional retimed pluggable optics will still be used in deployment. The goal here is to speed everything up at almost orders of magnitude improvement in performance, lower power. Optics are going to be a key piece of that, right? Yes, correct. This is not abnormal, right? Because whenever you get a new technology, it always takes time to absorb it. And particularly in a data center where this is mission critical type of stuff, you don't want to make mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah. This is normal for any uh, new innovation. And we are very excited to see this is happening in the modern data center right now. Young John, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Ed.